my friends, my name is Lindsay and I run the blog Books for Christian Girls and welcome to or welcome back to the little corner of the internet where I talk mainly about Christian fiction. I am so excited for today's video. We are back in my desk setup because I'm enjoying this setup. I think this is very fun. So much fun. I've had a lot of fun filming videos here and this is going to be another ring ding dinger of a video, in my opinion at least. I'm super excited. I am going to be sharing with y'all my book buzzwords and then just things I like to see in books. They're kind, some of them are kind of one more so than the other, one's more one way, they're, sometimes they're just like in the middle of just things I like to see in books, just in general. The buzzword sharing was really popular I think last year and I never jumped on it, but I did start a list of things I really like seeing in books and last night I was debating and debating, I wanted to film something I was super excited for today. And so I filmed one video, which, can you see the evidence of that? can kind of see that it's right there that small stack of books that's on the floor I had to steal some of them from here so I filmed that one that's coming next week if you can guess what that video is I'm gonna be really impressed if you can see what that book cover is I'm gonna be really impressed but anyway I was looking through last night I keep a lot of notes on my note app my note app is organized to perfection perfection if I say so myself and I have lots of video ideas on there and just the the start of different ones and like lists and just I like lists okay I really like lists so my notes app is very lovely and one of them I had was the start of my buzzwords for books and so I finished it last night I have a stack of books here of things I like to see in books and now it really it really poses a question that these are actually a lot of my all-time favorite books like top tier of all time favorite books and it obviously makes me really happy to talk about and I'm super excited about that but it also makes me wonder do I really enjoy this book or these books because of these elements or do I like these elements because of these books you know you see what I mean so will I have an answer for that question by the end of the video mm, no probably not probably not but I'm going to be talking about books I really like and things I really like to see in my books so I'm gonna be happy regardless. Let's get started, okay? I am, oh, I'm so excited. Where do we start? So if you're not familiar with what a buzzword is, basically a buzzword is something you hear someone describe about a book. So friends to more, it's bookish, it's set in this time period, and you're like, ooh, that sounds really interesting. They're words that get your attention, typically used for books. And so these are my list of my buzzwords, of books I really enjoy. So if you see me talk about something and you really like it as well, and maybe you know a book, let me know in the comments, please. Please, because I have recommendations for almost all of these, and then just go and chat about ones I really like. I am very really excited about this because again this is a stack of books like you can see quite a few have tabs that means I really enjoyed it if they most of these need tabs but they were read a while back so as I reread books here in the future I will start tabbing things and just marking parts I really love but if you know of any books that fit for these and you really enjoyed it and you would recommend them please let me know I will be sharing my thoughts of it, but like literally you can just say, oh, she likes fake dating, just do fake dating dash book title, book author, and submit the comment, and I would be thrilled. Like you don't have to go into detail unless you want to go into detail, that's totally fine with me too. But if you have recommendations for any of these things or buzzwords, please, please feel free to share as long as they are on that clean side. So starting off with libraries, books, bookish, bookstore, I think that's a very common one that a lot of book readers, book lovers love, is just seeing books that are surrounded about books. It just makes sense. So one book I really, really enjoyed was The Story People by Heather Kaufman. I haven't read this book and this is actually a goal for me this year to reread this book because I remember absolutely adoring this book. It is about a guy named Ben who inherits his his uncle's bookstore and then here comes a children's book author and illustrator and he just kind of falls heads over heels for it and it is precious. There's a little bit of matchmaking in here too which I'm going to be discussing that here in a second but it's just precious. It's set around a bookstore. We've got these elderly characters that are just up to mischief and I just love that as well. So yes, this is a hidden gem. A hidden gem. I feel like everybody I've recommended this book to has really, really enjoyed it. 
And if they haven't, they haven't let me know and I don't want to know. <laughs> like, the, the, I don't know, don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me. And it was just really good, really sweet. Faith content, just lovely. This author actually now writes biblical fiction, which isn't my thing, but this book was definitely my thing and I'm very much due for a reread. Another buzzword for me is Texas. Janice <laughs> Thompson. I am a born and raised Texan girl. I love I love books that have that southern charm from my state that they say y'all and they use the word properly. Okay, let me just rant real quick, my dear friends. I can tell what state you're from based on how you spell y'all. How where you put that punctuation? Where do you put that? This is a test. Which one is it? A or B? I'm gonna do the little Jeopardy do song. Do 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 however it goes. I, I haven't watched that show in years. But there is a correct answer and it is y'all is the uh, <laughs> full form of you all, right? You know, you know how we shorten things here in the English language? That's what's happening here. So if you picked number two, you're wrong. <laughs> like it's such a pet peeve of mine. Like it's such a little pet peeve. But it's just that I can tell what state you're typically from based off of which one you use. So Y apostrophe A L L, y'all is a the not contradiction, Lindsay. What's the word you're looking for? Contraction version of you all. It's when you are addressing a group of people, right? That's what y'all is. So typically I see those from Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, and Arkansas. Typically you spell it that way. Now mind you, there's going to be exclusion, uh, exceptions and exclusions to the rule. But then if you spell it the second way, Y-A apostrophe L-L, you are typically from Kentucky, Georgia, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, the Carolinas, maybe Florida. Like just little little tangent there right there y'all. It's not the form of you will because that's what that would be y a apostrophe l l that's you will no 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 so let's use it correctly okay okay like i know we always get told we're like southern hillbillies and all that kind of things and rednecks and whatnot but we can use the proper grammar for our own word right okay sorry so texas books i love texas books the thing is I'm not really a big cowboy person, so the cowboys need to be in the... I'm sorry, I did not mean to kick y'all. I'm so sorry. I don't really care for cowboys. So if it's a cowboy book, it needs to be a historical time period, which would remind me of, like, The Last Groom in Texas by Janice Thompson, which was originally published as Love Finds You in Groom, Texas by Janice Hanna. And then even... Yeah, that's really... Hmm. Those are really the cowboy books I like are written by her. And then for the historical time period. But then for contemporary Texas themed books, Janice Thompson writes it so well. Like, the, she's from here. She's from the north side of Houston. She lives on the north side of Houston. She is a wonderful, lovely human being. And I like her books. So, a contemporary series set here in Texas would be the Gone to the Dog series. Hello, I'm talking about this series again. Are we shocked? No. No, we are not shocked at all. It's a really good series. It mentions my state flower of the blue bonnets, and it's just lovely. It's lovely. This is, I'm actually filming this the week this week is being, this video is being posted. Full disclaimer, it's Monday, March 18th. The blue bonnets are blooming, and it is beautiful. It's beautiful. They always bloom right about Easter, and Easter is early this year, so the blue bonnets are early this year, and it's just beautiful. It's beautiful. I could fangirl forever, but I'm going to continue on. Another buzzword that I really like, it's kind of, it's kind of a buzzword, but early 1900s historical fiction set in a big city. Elizabeth Camden does this well. Now mind you, some of her books are misses for me, but I always enjoy seeing that early 1900s kind of gilded age with the start of technology and just the architecture. Oh, the architecture of the early 1900s, the pictures, and it's just beautiful and it's just fascinating it's not what we have now and I just love that early 1900 time period because we've got the technology entering in we most likely have running water which is kind of a big deal for me and it's just it's just awesome it's just like the especially when it's set in the big city particularly when it's set in the big city and we have like in New York, you've got all the immigration and all the different cultures, and I just think that's fascinating. And just that time of history, it just, it makes me giggly. Like, it's just fascinating to me. Like, obviously, yes, there are sad, terrible things happening on the horizon, because 
we can look back at that in hindsight with history and textbooks if those textbooks are accurate but it's just fascinating to me that time period like that 1895 to 1910 that is the time period that is just my time period so the spice king by elizabeth camden is set in that time period i'm trying to think washington dc is actually which was just very fascinating and wait a second i feel like it was set another place too was it all dc i know the second book was dc oh virginia alexandria virginia so i also had that and this just has to do with spices and a family company and competition and i love that's all that's something that's not on this list but i do also love it when we have like competing family rivalry kind of thing i like family drama in my books not in real life but in my books i find that very fascinating so this book kind of has a little bit of that and it's just very interesting this author really i feel like is my go-to for that early 1900 time period a lot of my other ones that I enjoy, like Anne Mateer or Carol Cox, those are more Western early 1900s, which I still really enjoyed those. But big city, the big city like Chicago and then New York, D.C., even Cincinnati was considered a pretty big city at that time with like the technology, very East Coast style. And I just think that's fascinating. The telegrams, the telephones starting the trains, the subways, just the true beginnings of what we see now in America, what we have, like, that's our origin story. Like, yeah, obviously Americans old, America is older, but it's just that time period that just fascinates me. So I really do enjoy that one. Another one, friends to more trope. Yes. Yes, please. I've never really been into the enemies to more trope, and I think that's very fascinating. But friends to more. Childhood best friends to more, friends to more, best friends to more. I like every variety of it. I think it's great. I've read a few that have it, but there's never really been one that just makes my heart just sing in giddy joy yet. Not really yet, but one that was very close to that was Off the Chain by Janice Thompson. You know, I'm going to take every opportunity to talk about this series because it's such a good series. Also, Every Dog Has His Day, which is kind of, it's book five, but it also, you see this couple particularly again. And I would grab it, but it's way down at the bottom of that teetering stack of books, so we're not going to grab it. Here is the cover. And we see this couple again. I say this is kind of this trope because we only get her point of view. Which I liked, but at the same time... To have that trope properly done, in my opinion, I want both perspectives because that's adorable. So, it counts in my opinion, but it's not quite that friends to more trope. Not quite there. Another buzzword for me would be gardens, gardening, plants, flowers, secret garden, even better. You put garden or a flower on the cover or title, I'm here. I'm curious, I wanna know more, I enjoy gardening, I enjoy flowers. So two books that have that would be Heirlooms by Sandra Bird. This is a dual time period novel that I've talked about for a while. First, it's present day with a flower farm and then historical time period is set in the late 1950s and it's following an American woman and a Korean woman and how their lives have intersected during, well, after the Korean War. And it was very interesting, very sweet made me cry. Another plant themed book would be Like a Flower in Bloom by Sori Mitchell. This is set in like the 1850s and it's all about a girl named Charlotte who has been assisting her botanist father for years and has basically just been booted out of being his assistant because her uncle gets the idea that oh you need to go get married and be in society so she's trying to get her job back but then here comes this other guy who's taking her job over and we've got a little bit of that rivals to more but I just really enjoyed all the plants and the flower aspects of it. And then it mentioned, I'm pretty sure it was this book that mentioned about the orchid terrarium kind of thing. And I have some beautiful orchids. Would you like to see one of my orchids? It's actually blooming, so this is lovely. I keep it right here at my desk. Here's my beautiful orchid. And I have actually seen those orchid terrarium-ish things. I'm trying to think what they're called. My brain has just gone blank. But basically it's like this glass house for orchids. And I'm 
Oh, wait, was it this one or this one? It might have been the Spice King that mentioned that. Regardless, one of them did, and then I went to an antique show, and I've seen that. And, y'all, if I had, like, $6,000 just lying around, I would have bought it. But, at last, I do not have $6,000 lying around. And the funny thing is I go to the antique show every year, and it is almost always there. Like, it, nobody else has $6,000 to lay around with this. But, oh! One day, y'all, no, not one day. That, that probably wouldn't be a wise use of my money, but oh, it's pretty. I'll see if I can find a picture of what I mean, because I don't think I have a picture of the one I've seen. I don't think I have a picture of the one I see, I've seen, but I'll put a picture of kind of what I mean. It was either the Spice King or like a Flower in Bloom that mentioned that. I'm not sure which one, but regardless, it just like was so cool to see. I don't know, have y'all experienced this when you, maybe if you like antiquing or whatnot, when you read historical fiction books and you hear about something that's like, oh, I've never seen that before, or you kind of have to research it, what it is, because it's not something we use anymore. And then you see it in real life, that's a really cool, like it's a it's a cool thing. It's it's just neat. So anyway, yes, I do, I do, I do really like those. Another buzzword for me would just be teas, herbs, med medicinal plants, homeopathic things. I find that field fascinating. I am growing a tea garden this year for the first time, and I'm so excited! I will probably do a video at some point showing y'all my garden stuff, because I am just so excited about how the garden is turning out this year. I've been putting in a lot of work about it, but with the teas and herbs and medicinal things, Poor Astro, let me try that again. The Poor Astro Secrets Trilogy by Sandra Orchard. This series is out of print. And I am so sad about that because it is really good. It is a suspense trilogy. It's actually my favorite suspense series. Series? Trilogy? Yes. Yeah, series? Pretty positive on that. And it is all about a girl named Kate who... <laughs> bless her heart. So she is a research assist... Uh, research... Let me try that again. This is all about Kate, though, who is a research scientist, and her mentor has mysteriously died, and she is determined to find out what happened, what's going on. They were on a major breakthrough for one of their cake, for one of their products, if you will, and lots of things happen. This is such a good trilogy. Like, this is a trilogy, every time I talk about it, I want to instantly just turn off the camera and start rereading it because there's so many things that happen in this trilogy and it follows Kate throughout the whole trilogy which is really neat and then the romance is light and then it just continues to be pretty light throughout the rest of the trilogy and it's just great it's great so teas herbs medicinal things there we go another buzzword I really like fake dating I blame my pre-christian fiction Wattpad days <sighs> that, that was an error, y'all. So, I have a few that would fit for this, but I feel like I need more. So, if you know any fake dating books, whether it's Christian, preferably Christian fiction, but if clean fiction is fine too, like really squeaky clean, clean fiction, I would be fine with that as well. This is one, I don't know why I enjoy this. Again, probably because of all the YA Wattpad books I read back in the day. But one of them that I can think of that I really liked for Christian fiction was Dangerous Engagement. I really liked that one by Melanie Dickerson. That's part of her Regency Spies of London series. And then Jen Toronto has done some. So like To Spark a Match, book two, that one had it partially and I really liked that. I thought that was really fun. After a Fashion by Jen Toronto, I'm pretty sure also had it. Yes. Oh, this book was so funny. I want to reread this book. I remember really enjoying this series and I haven't read it since it first released, which was back in 2015. And this was just so funny. This is one of the ones on Goodreads I have the most quotes saved from. Because there were just so many funny parts. So I need to reread this series, but I remember this one particularly having the fake dating trope and it was great. Fairy tale retellings. Depending on the fairy tale, in all reality, some in interest me more than others. Like, I really do like Rapunzel and Cinderella, typically, in general. I feel like those are the two that I'm pretty easily amused or satisfied by. And one I really liked Rapunzel-wise recently was The Lady of Lenaria by Michaela Bush. Again, I would grab it, but it's down at the bottom of that stack. It ain't happening. Sorry, y'all. So, really sweet, sweet 
Rapunzel story with Christian faith content. Male lead was precious. The female lead was great. It was just really neat in that book particularly to see Christian faith content, like well done Christian faith content with that fairy tale retelling fantasy world. It was great. So really enjoyed that one. I have a few others on this list that are also retellings that I'll try to mention, but I've read quite a few retellings over the years and I have enjoyed quite a few as well, so that's great. Dystopian books. This was my first tiptoe into fantasy years ago. Really the only type of fantasy books I even read for years up to the last couple of years ago. Dystopian books just have a special place in my heart. They sincerely truly do. It's getting a little less, like just slightly, fun to read them nowadays though with how the world is. They're taking the joy out of my fiction books because they're not feeling like fiction anymore. But there are still some that have my heart. One trilogy, Anomaly trilogy by Chris McGee. An icon in its time. So many people call this dated now. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. It was, it was this, it was it. It was the it girl of its time, okay. So many people compare it to Divergent, Divergent, however you say that. I never read that series. I really hadn't, ironically, I had no interest in the secular dystopian books. Even though I liked dystopian books so much because of this trilogy and another series. I never read those, but I always heard these two compared. So, just, mm, mm. This book had a love triangle, I'm not going to lie, this trilogy does. But it ended the way I wanted it to, so I was fine with it. Another dystopian series. This is, I mean, a duology. I think this is a duology. Is I'm trying to remember, y'all. So Jupiter Winds and then Jupiter Storm is book two. And then there's a prequel novella. And I actually haven't read this in way too long. So I'm going to try to see if I can reread it within the next week or two because I'm just craving a good dystopian book as I hit myself. And so I'm thinking I'm going to do it. So I can't remember if book two ends like well or if it ends on the cliffhanger or if it's like okay that was the last book I don't remember so I am bracing myself for pain again I just remember just absolutely adoring this series I still torment my mother I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna say tease I torment her I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna name a granddaughter Gray one day because a oh, granddaughter for her my daughter Gray one day because of the main girl in the series I just love her so much and it's just great. Another dystopian book I recently found is Clean Fiction. I would rate it more as PG-13, but that would be Drafted by Tommy Michelle. This, this satisfied that dystopian craving I have every once in a while. It's just, I don't know what it is about dystopian books that I just enjoy so much, but I do. I sincerely do. And this book definitely had that. The author is currently in the process of writing book two. And I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm so waiting. This was really entertaining though. The main girl is a, uh, oh gosh, that word again. Um, I struggled with that when I talked about this in the recent reads. That word. It's that word. And it's just really fun. It's very thrilling, very action-packed. The government is obviously corrupt, and I think, I think that's why I like my dystopian books, because the governments are obviously corrupt, and, well, does everyone get it? No. So, hmm, it is like real life. Not everyone understands the government's corrupt. Hmm, interesting. I digress. I thought it was very entertaining, very fun. Looking forward to book two. Another, <laughs> another buzzword I really like would be matchmaking. So, The Story People by Heather Kaufman, which is at the very bottom of the stack. Look at that. Oh, Lindsay Grace. I'm so sorry. Okay, I think we're all okay. The panic I think I just had in my eyes. Okay, everyone's okay. But the story people has a lovely peachy pink spine. So that one has matchmaking, but also a match in the making by Jen Toronto has it has matchmaking, hence the title. And she actually becomes a matchmaker's assistant. So it's actually not even that she's being match made, like where in the story people the main characters are being match made. Match made? That sounds weird. But anyway, I love both aspects of it. Whether they are the ones receiving the matchmaking or they are doing the matchmaking, I think that's really fun. Okay, this one may not be a buzzword. It might be more of a trope. I don't know what you would call it, but awkward around girls, male leads. Yes. Okay, so 
The two books I have for that would be Storing Up Trouble by Jin Toronto. I'm pretty sure I have called him. He was like a baby giraffe at times. Like he was, I'm pretty sure I've called him that. I'm pretty sure it was this one. It was one of the two. But I just loved that. It's so much fun. And then A Seaside Wonder by Melissa Tag. The main guy in this is so nerdy and just stuttering and awkward and just blushing up a storm. And I just think that's adorable. And the main guys are just not smooth and suave and all this kind of like... <sighs> I like it better when they're awkward because it tells me, oh, you're not a player. Or like, oh, you just said this pickup line. How many other girls have you said that to before? I like it when they're awkward and just, they don't know what to do around girls. And I think that's the cutest thing. So I, these two books particularly have that. And they're just, you know, of that nerdy aspect. And I, I don't know. I just think that's really cute. Another one that's maybe more of a genre, but I'm counting it regardless, is Contemporary Christian YA. That's just going back to my roots. That's how I found Christian fiction, was through Contemporary YA books. So it's just, it's going back to my roots. And so, like, let's see, that's Krista McGee, that's Taylor Bennett, Amy Clipston's Contemporary Ones, Aaron Mangum, Robin Jones Gunn. Melody Carlson, some of her books that are just teen drama filled that I enjoyed so much. And then a newer book I really enjoyed that fits under this umbrella of contemporary Christian YA would be Hey Jude Carpenter by Storm Stoltz. Still have not gotten my physical copy yet of that one. I've been trying to think if I'm going to do a really big book order, which I know I shouldn't, but... I'm thinking about it. It's a bad, it's a bad thinking, bad thinking, but I'm very, yes, did enjoy that one and want to do it. I just love contemporary Christian YA. So that right there, if I hear contemporary Christian YA, I just got whip flash kind of thing. Like I'm, I'm focused. What was that? I don't need to know more. What's the author? When's it coming out? <gasps> Making notes. Okay. I'm good. That's, that's just my thing. I really like it. That's really also with the Christian dystopian books. If you tell me Christian dystopian, I'm here. I need to know nothing else. Like, I will, I will read it. That is an, a very easy sell to me. And same with Christian Contemporary YA. Those are just my two genres. Those are my original two book loves, if you will. So, yeah, I will read those. Another maybe more so genre, but I'm going to call it... I'm going to call it a buzzword for me. And that is Contemporary Rom-Coms with Good Faith Content. I've attempted many clean rom-coms, and let's be honest, I probably will keep on attempting clean rom-coms, but they just don't hit the same way. They don't, they don't, they just, they aren't it the same way as ones with faith content do. So like Aaron Mangum, Aaron Mangum, Janice Thompson, they just, they're, they're my favorite authors for a reason, right? We know this. So with Aaron Mangum, the faith content is just unmatched. Wink, wink, if you got that pun. The humor is top tier. The characters are relatable. And then with Janice Thompson, you get the Texas Southern charm. You get the crazy characters, the humor, the faith content with talking about Jesus like he's in the room with them. And I, ju I just love it. I just love it. It makes me so happy. I love their books. Clean contemporary rom-coms with good faith content. And the romance not being over the top. I'm not picky at all. I just know what I like. <laughs> Another little specific thing I really like seeing is when both main characters have a faith and are at a somewhat equal level in it. This isn't very common in Christian fiction. There's typically one that has a faith and then one that is struggling or upset at God for whatever reason. And that I've been there, I understand. But it's really nice to see a book where both characters have a faith and they can have very, level isn't the word I'm looking for, but like very on par to bat with each other on faith conversations and discussions. And I just think that's so encouraging and healthy to see. I know without a doubt in my mind, I have read books and I have commented on, look, they both had a faith. Like, you know how rare that is? I know I've commented about that. And I can't think what book that was. I the Librarian of Boone's Hollow? Was it that one by Kim Vogel Sawyer? Maybe? I can't think of what book or a more recent-ish book. Carrie Taransky typically does this well. Kimberly Woodhouse's trilogy of um, Secrets of the Canyon. That trilogy, I'm more so... the f Was it the first book? or the th I think it was the third book, really, had that more so. That they both had a faith. 
but there was not, there is a specific book. There's a specific book I am thinking of, and I can't think what it is. Like I can I can picture it, but I can't picture it. Picture the cover. I can't think of it, but I love it when that happens. Aaron Mangum does this really well as well. But we typically only, with her, we only ever see the fa uh, the female main characters. So, yes, that counts, but it's not, it's not quite the example I want to give, but it's great. Also, though, speaking of male leads and all that, encouraging male leads. <gasps> when they encourage the main girl, not only in whatever is going on in their life, but also in her walk with God. Oh my dear friends. Okay. That's just I feel like my heart my eyes have turned into hearts. Like I just, mm. and you know one series that did this really well? As I hold it upside down. You know one series that did it really well? The Paige Adler series. Fire my gum. It's me again, Van Grilling Bell, Aaron Mangum, here at my desk filming a video. For really good reasons, y'all. This is ah, uh, uh, I love it. I love it. I love it. So yeah, that was mm, top tier right there. It's just great. I feel like I'm also kind of giving y'all like a glimpse of my type of guy, if you will, like the awkward and nerdy around the girls. He's encouraging that golden retriever energy, almost like that. That's so cute. It's so cute. So cute. Anyway, okay, next, when the male lead prays for and about the female lead. <laughs> I've seen this where, like, the male lead prays about a relationship with the girl, and I was just, oh, that's adorable. So, like, Carrie Taransky does that well, and then A Mark of Grace by Kimberly Woodhouse had that as well, and it was, oh, it was so sweet, so sweet. But a book I recently read that went a step further. Never Fall Again by Lynn H. Blackburn. This book took me by surprise. I'm going to be discussing this in my next recent reads. I just read this one this past week. Ish. Something like that. I'm going to discuss it soon. Anyway, I was very pleasantly surprised by this. So it is a romantic suspense book, but it's more romantic than suspense. The suspense is really light, and then we just maybe 10-15% of the whole book is that element. It's really light, which I actually really liked. It was different than the author's other books, and she has said that as well, that it's a different style for her, but it's what she really, how she really likes to write, so that makes me excited to see the rest of the series. But they have a suspenseful moment, and the main guy pauses and asks, like, you know, in the suspense plot line of the book, and the main guy pauses and asks if he can pray for her, and then he does pray for her, and it's written on his, ah! tears in my eyes. I had tears in my eyes. That was so sweet. I literally was uh, noting this on Goodreads as I was reading and I had to do a status update then because for Christian fiction we should see that way more in my opinion. We should see that way more. We should see the characters praying more about their relationships and their potential love interests and just praying for each other. We should see that a lot more than what we do. And this just was excellent to see that. It was so sweet. And after I finished this book and I gave it four stars, particularly because that scene really just won me over, but overall it was a really good read as well. I actually quickly ordered my copy and I had to have it because of that. That was just so sweet. Another thing I really liked seeing, kind of going, connecting in with that romantic suspense thing is FBI main characters. Now I know... I know. There's problems with the FBI and CIA and the IRS, and especially the IRS. And like, you know, a lot of the government agencies. But in my fiction books, they're fiction books, you know, they're fiction. So I can enjoy them. And in all reality, I, my minor was criminal justice. So I like reading criminal justice fields and I like... I just like that criminal justice field of the suspense books. And I'll read about like if they're a police officer or a sheriff or CIA or whatever. But FBI is always the one that has me the most interested in it. 
and they just get pushed up higher on my TBR compared to all the other suspense books. I just, I like FBI books. I don't know why. I ha I think I know why, but I just really enjoy that. So one of my favorite ones would be Crossfire by Lena Easton. Did you see this one coming? Julia, Julie, Juliana, I am so sorry, I just butchered her name. Juliana here is just great. She stole this show. One of my favorite books from whenever this book released. When was it? 2022. Okay, I was going to guess that. 2022. The faith content was just so well done. The discussions. The She was just the coolest. She's a hostage negotiator. And the calm, cool, collect brain that you have to have for that, I don't have. So I just found that absolutely fascinating. And just seeing her, she was awesome. She was just awesome, y'all. Like, talk about goals. How I'd love to be kind of thing. If I was in that field, which I'm not because I'm 5'3 and totally not intimidating, let's be honest here. So, I just really enjoy reading about FBI main characters and it's even better when it's the girl is also an FBI agent. Or at least she is the FBI agent because actually he was a former sniper in the army and now he's a security officer resource officer at her sister's school. That's right. I'm trying to remember. Oh, this was so good. I'm trying to remember all the details of it. But... It was just really good. I could fangirl more, but I will continue on. Spies. Case closed. Spies. I just like spies. Maybe that goes in with the FBI kind of thing, but I just like spies. Historical spies, yes. Contemporary spies, yes. All of the spies. I think it's great. So one book that particularly has spies would be The Debutante's Code by Erica Vitch. And this is a Regency art mystery trilogy. This first book is more art. The other two aren't necessarily art. But the main girl finds out that, oh, her family are spies for the royal crown, and she's expected to join in, but what does that exactly entail when you're a Christian? And I loved seeing that moral dilemma, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the word dilemma here in a couple notes here again, but I just love it when we have that dilemma for our main characters to figure out how does that work? Like, you want me to do this, but we're not supposed to lie as Christians, and... and and how does this work? And I love it when that happens. But that's more for the dilemma, which I will talk more about in a minute. But for this case, I just love the spy aspect. I love the Regency aspect. And it was just, this book had, had, the let me rephrase that. This book had just a very different view of it because of that. Other characters look at it as like, this is my job. This is what I have to do. I am protecting people. But in this book, she is really struggling. Well, not really, but like she really ponders and thinks about that struggle and what that means as a Christian. And I thought that was very fascinating. Really, really enjoyed this book. This whole trilogy was really good. I've talked about it before. Another one that kind of goes with spies, Love in Disguise by Carol Cox. She is a pink tent agent and it has to go undercover. And that's another thing I think I really like with the spies is the spies undercover even the Pinkerton agents, I really like that aspect. So we're going to include that one in this stack. I did not have that written down, but it needs to be written on this list. I really like books with people going undercover because of their spy -ness, their spy career. I think that's very interesting. But I do like the Pinkerton agents as well. Another, well, okay, you know, I'm going to... I'm going to skip real quick to that dilemma topic because I like it apparently when the word dilemma is in the title. These are two books I gave like four and a half and five stars and that would be The Cryptographer's Dilemma by Johnny Alexander is maybe how you pronounce the author's name. A Million Dollar Dilemma by Judy Bear. I know this book isn't for everyone but I like it. Okay. I like it. It is nostalgic for me. It is contemporary cuteness. The main girl accident is a preacher's kid and she accidentally wins the lottery. And she does not want anything to do with that money. And here comes her new neighbor who is very bookish and just an overall pretty good guy. And it's just really sweet. I really liked it. Again, I like it when the characters have something they are like, what am I going to do here? What, what, how am I going to get through this situation? And it's typically like a moral dilemma. That I really like those. I've talked about that before. I really like moral dilemma books. This book was less of a moral dilemma, The Cryptographer's Dilemma, but she still had the dilemma of... She really didn't have a dilemma. Let me take that back. It really was not a moral dilemma at all, but it is said during World War II, there were spies. <laughs> spies, code breaking. That's also a thing I really like is code breaking. And... Yeah, it was really good. I enjoyed this one. 
my stack is getting taller and taller. I love it. Okay, with that, I also, okay, I'm skipping all around on my list, like, oh well. I also really like smart characters, and I feel like that goes with codes and puzzle breaking as well, in my opinion. So, The Mysterious Men Society by Trent Lee Stewart. I love this book. Uh, this whole series just has my entire heart, like, not just a bit of it, it has my whole heart. It's such a good series, the characters are so smart. And also the kids, like, they're, they're smart little geniuses, but they're so polite and just lovely like okay yes constance can be a little stinker but that's constance that's constance that's fine but like Rennie, love a plus kid love them they're just smart and the code breaking the puzzles i just i like all of that too my stack is getting teetering also on that moral dilemma when we have political intrigue or a political intrigue and political intrigue is that how we say that word and then just politics of a fictional world mechanical heart by sarah pennington did this really well this was a very 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 loose retelling of rapunzel and it was set kind of in a stink steampunk i can't say that word steampunk world and it was just fun it was really interesting. It had a lot about like that blood alchemy, I think is how you say that. And like some people in the political world were pushing for it and others were not. And we see the crown prince's point of view, which one of the best crown princesses I've ever read, I'd like to say. And crown princes, let me say that. Crown princes, not princesses, princes I've ever read. He was absolutely great. And we see like the debates of the council. And I just thought that was fascinating because it made me really pull back and think, well, what is my opinion on this? What, what, how would I feel? How would I feel if I was in this situation? What would I think? Oh, they're giving really good arguments and they're just smart characters. Like the people in this book were so smart. Even the bad guys, it's like, wow, he's smart. Like I see, I see what he means. Like it was very, really impressively done. So I enjoyed that. But like Mysterious Manic Society had the smart characters. It had the puzzle breaking. The Cryptographer's Dilemma had the puzzle breaking. It's just so much fun. And then I think my last one I will share today is big families and just sibling dynamics. And the legend... This title. The Legendary Ings. It's short for Ingrid. So Ing. I'm going to pronounce it Ing. By Kate Straudling. Okay, do you see all my tabs here? Y'all see my tabs? See my tabs? Some of these are just because of the sibling content and banter. Like, it was so much fun. The, okay, that was all the purple ones, which is about almost half. Maybe a third of my tabs I have here are purple. And those are just that cute sibling banter, big family moments. I just think that's so much fun. I love it. I love it. I love it. I think it's okay. So this was a really good fantasy book that I enjoyed. It does have magic as a heads up. But it was really good. Okay, so I'm going to teeter and put my stack here. Look at this stack of books. Isn't this just beautiful? This actually is a lot of my actual all-time favorite books. That is so funny. That's funny. So, it poses the question. Do I like these elements in books? Are these buzzwords in books because of these books? Or do I like these books because of those elements? I don't know. I almost would feel like I like these elements already. And then because these books have these elements, I like them. But I could see it the other way. Because, like, some of these I read years ago. And, like, you could, you, um, the Mysterious Man Society, hello, that shaped me. That shaped me into the adult I am today, without a doubt in my mind. So, like, that one I read years ago. Million Dollar Dilemma was one of the very first books I ever read and reviewed for BFCG. Long time ago. Love in Disguise was in that first year. Like, a lot of um, Jupiter Winds Anomaly within that first year. There's so many here. Like, there's some newer releases, but most of these I read five plus years ago. Even ten years ago, almost, on some of them. So that's just... Interesting. That's just really interesting. <laughs> Things to ponder. Wow, this is a really good... This is a nice stack of books, if I say so myself. I like this stack of books. So as I reorganize this stack of lovely books, I would love to know what your buzzwords are in the comments below. Is there anything you particularly like to see? Do we have any in common? Are there ones you like? Feel free to recommend me some books. And if you want to share some things you like, I will see if I can come up with recommendations for that. Like not from my list, but like other ones. 
maybe I can do that. I have, <laughs> I'm going to tease y'all with this. I have a master list on my computer of a bunch of different tropes and genres and just like things. So like friends to more, enemies to more, rivals to more, fake dating, mistaken hidden identities, love triangles, the grumpy sunshine, second chance, found family, chosen one, ones with sports, reformed bad boy. I have a wonderful, wonderful list that is only for my eyes. I'm totally teasing y'all. I'm so sorry. But if you would like to comment something you really like and to see in a book, like, maybe more broad. Don't do, like, it has a hamster. I like books that have hamsters. Don't do that to me. Don't do that to me. I don't know of any books that have hamsters. <laughs> but if you want to do a broad thing, then I could probably share some. That might be fun to do. Give me a little challenge in the comments. Not a ma not a ma no hamsters. Don't ask about hamsters. <laughs> I don't know where hamsters just came out of my brain. But, yeah, that might be kind of fun. So let me know if you have any requests for things you like to see in books. And then if you know of any books that have the things I like, feel free to leave those in the comments below. We will have fun with this, maybe. Maybe, I think this will be fun. We'll see. If anyone wants to join in, let's have at it. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I feel like whenever I do like a, kind of like a challenge like that, nobody really ever takes me up on it, but I'm serious. It will be fun. Just don't ask about hamsters. <laughs> uh, I just keep staring at the stack of books. It's such a beautiful stack of books if I say so myself, but okay, I need to go. The lighting is getting dark. I need to go pull weeds still today. So I'm gonna go put on an audiobook and do that. But I hope y'all have an absolutely lovely rest of your day. I look forward to chatting with y'all in the comments. Let me know if you've read any of these. Do you want to read any of these? Do we have any of these? That was teetering. If we have any of these tropes or buzzwords or just things we like to see in common, let me know. And I will see y'all next time. I am Lindsay from the blog Books for Christian Girls at blogspot.com where there is a new review every Monday and Friday. I try to post a new video on this channel every Friday. And then I am also on Instagram and TikTok and Goodreads because I just have to share about books all over the internet. Obviously, that's what I do. So I will see y'all next time. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have an absolutely lovely rest of your day. Bye!